Hey, can you look at there's some brand out there that's gonna want to be like that? Wait, man, those are ours. Just so you know, I use these headphones like every day. Oh, that looks great, dude. That looks great as it is. I think being a perfectionist with everything is just goes into like passion, right? I think you can tell a lot by someone's work. Yeah, what is going on, Indie Mogul? My name is Ted. Today we're talking about commercial product shots and how you can get this basically next to no budget and any camera. So for this today, I got my buddy Justin Jones over here. This is Justin. Up, we have shot a ton of commercial product shots over a really long period of time. So today we're gonna be doing this totally from scratch. So Justin, when you shoot product shots, what kind of camera do you usually shoot? With? Usually it's a, like a Red Weapon or a Lexa Mini. Cool, don't oh. care. Here we go. So you are going to be no shooting way. With this camera. Okay, DSLR. This is the 60. Canon 60. 1080p. Mark II, yep. Okay. Does not shoot 4K. This is a, a consumer DSLR by most means. It's a great DSLR, don't yeah, get me wrong. Absolutely. It does the job. But uh, you're gonna be shooting with this. Have you shot with this camera before? I have not cool. shot with this camera. Using this, we're gonna shoot a headphones ad. Let me get the headphones real quick. Let me find these. Where, where do we put the headphones? Is this it? I think these are $18 headphones off Amazon. Are you ready to make these look like commercial footage? Yes, I am. Sounds good. All right, let's do this. Here we go. So uh, starting off, what is our first step when we're trying to light a commercial? So first step is finding a location and a backdrop that's going to suit your needs for the actual product shot. Yeah. Um, in this case, we're going to go for an infinite black setup. Uh, so today we're here at my studio mm -hmm. uh, and we have a full black wall. So cool. we're going to just go ahead and start with getting yeah. everything set up in that location. Sounds good. So got a table over here. We're gonna pop this open. So now um, the next thing we wanna do is make sure that we have enough distance from our wall so we don't have light spilling onto it since we're going for infinite black. So we Got need it. to move this away from the wall. Okay, sounds good. We need some kind of like really beautiful surface yeah. to actually shoot the product laying on top of. Okay. Uh, so we have a black acrylic, yeah. uh, which is reflective, but it still gives us a, that black infinite. What is that you got there? So this is our next secret. So okay. with the acrylic, we're going to put that on top of a spinning Lazy Susan. Okay. That way we can get our product spinning around and kind of capture all the details of it without having to move too much. And if you can't afford an electronic spinner, I know in the gear industry, they like to overprice a lot of things. You can find a Lazy Susan. Sure, yeah, the manual ones. And you could also use yeah. camera movement to move around your item instead of actually using a Lazy gotcha. Susan. So next, I think we should just set our product on there and then we're gonna go ahead and start lighting. How do you pose your products? <laughs> Like that. Uh, yeah, so just, yeah, uh, I think uh, pose them in like, the most natural way that you would see a pair of headphones, right? So okay. not like that. <laughs> that looks like a face. Hold on, guys. <laughs> yeah, that looks bad. That way we that can see natural. the foam and stuff yeah. like that. And so we'll just place them and we want to get them directly on the center of the spin. Mm -hmm. That way when they spin, it's not off kilter. So talk to me first about where we're going to place our camera. So to kick this off, we're going to need a tripod, of course. So we'll walk the tripod in. And then we want to also get a little lower than eye level with the product. And that's gonna help with two things. First, it's gonna make the product feel bigger. Mm -hmm. And second, it's gonna help us kind of blend our black acrylic into the background. What camera settings are we gonna set to? So our aperture here, we wanna be able to see the product in its entirety. We don't wanna be too shallow on our depth of field. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be around like anywhere from like a four to an eight. Gotcha. I think that'll give us enough range to be able to see the product. And then if we do need to, we can rack a little bit. Gotcha. And generally speaking, what people have told me is that uh, when you shoot product shots, you want to shoot a little bit deeper so that you can see all the details of the product and things like that too. Yeah, and it's I, up to you. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to shoot this in slow motion. That's going to give us a ton of possibilities in post. We'll be able to do speed ramps. And then it's also going to be a little more majestic, right? The slow spinning of the actual product. And it just gives you more options. Yeah. More options. Got that way you can good. speed it up if you want to, and then you'll still have that really smooth slow motion. Yeah. And it's 60 frames That's a second. 60 frames. So we're going to click on that. Now that we're shooting slow motion, we want to make sure that our shutter speed is double our frame rate. Okay. And that just gives us the most pleasant motion blur, and that'll keep our product from being too blurry or too sharp. It'll give us the most cinematic look. Now that we've got our product set and we've got our camera set up, uh, what's next? Uh, the next thing I would do here is put up a light. On any product shoot, I like to use a soft overhead light. Um, the bigger the source, the better, especially uh, because of reflections, right? So if you can't tell it's a light, yeah. that's better. Get a big old light. I'll point we'll use it straight down. This one right this here? One here? Okay, yeah. cool. Sounds good. So, so we'll use the gobo arm here and we'll just kind of extend this up over the product. Gotcha. So for everybody asking out there, why do you need a C-stand versus a regular stand? I'd say one of the most obvious reasons is you can do this. You can actually rig a light out over something. 
Oh, boom. Yes, okay. So already we're getting a really nice image. What's the key to placing the top plate? How do you know that you've put it in the right place? So I'm just, I'm looking just for an overhead soft key that's just going to spill this beautiful kind of uh, quality of light just yeah. coming down from the top. Uh, it kind of mimics like the room you're in. Mm. Right, so a lot of people like shooting in those little product boxes. And the reason that's good is because any reflections just look like the room you're in. Gotcha. So the bigger your overhead source, like when you're shooting cars, for example, yeah. since they're so reflective, you have to shoot on like a 20, like a 20 by 40 big overhead softbox, And that will allow the reflections to just look like the roof. Already we're looking pretty okay, honestly. Because it's overhead, it's still giving us some shadows. It's not frontal, it's not making it flat. Yeah. So we're still, as you can see, we're getting these shadows uh, here in the product, yeah. uh, but it's giving us this really nice fall off on top and into those shadows of the metal. I think Just the, the first out. thing you can do to make these product shots look better is never put a front light. If you have a front light, take it away. Yeah. Put something either from the back or from the top. The next thing I wanna do is put some uh, black duvetine or a blanket or some kind of sheet on the ground actually behind this setup. Mm -hmm so we don't get light spilling anywhere else. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a sound blanket here. But like I said, you could use like a sheet or a bed sheet or uh, anything gotcha. black, really. I think we need some kind of back edge just to kind of give us some definition on the product, all right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's also going to give us a glimmer on the metal as it spins around. It'll give us that glimmer of hard light. Mm -hmm. So right now we have soft light. I think we need to add hard light to give uh, some shape to the product. So, yeah, so we're gonna use a kicker. We'll use something with a Fresnel or a spotlight or something something sharp. Yeah, right about there, 45 degrees to the back. Beautiful. Okay, another thing we wanna do is try and get it off of our acrylic. Yeah, we'll spot it in and then we'll use the barn door to kind of cut off that light on the bottom. You can also see like down on the headphone band right there. We need to flip those over. So right Attention now, to detail. You're worried about the logo. The right logo now, is upside down. down. You don't like it? You don't no, like, stop. You don't like me like touching and like making it worse. smearing like You're putting your grease oils all, all over it. it. The thing with product shot, you constantly have to be cleaning it. Okay. It has to be perfect every time you roll the camera. So yeah. it takes a lot of time. And then every time it starts to get dirty, every time you handle it, watch out for fingerprints yes. and watch out for dust. We've got a little dust cleaning kit. Uh, we've got one right over here. And Oh my gosh, all those fingerprints, I can see them now. Yep, now, yep, see? Ew, Don't you wish you didn't do that. Oh my gosh, there's so much dust. Nice. All right, so, so what else are you seeing that we could add optional? Right, so when shooting products, um, brands have like branding, right? So say this company, their logo has some red in it or mm -hmm. some teal in it or something. So you can take that kicker light and actually throw a gel on it to change the color and give us uh, some branding. Gotcha. And kind of wrap the branding around into the product video. So how do you pick which colors you wanna do? You said- Basically, I, I, I like to do research on the brand, right? If I'm shooting something small. I'll see what they use as their color scheme and I'll just work that in. So throwing some red in here. Oh man, look at that. That looks great already, already, that's incredible. Um, obviously we need to clean that acrylic, Ooh. but so far we're getting some beautiful stuff down in our reflections here. Ooh. And then you can try changing things up, right? You're not stuck to a lighting setup. Then why don't you just turn that guy off and then you get, you know. This kind of moody reveal of Moody reveal. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And real quick, I want to remind you guys about Storyblocks, who will actually save the day when you actually have to make a product commercial and all of the money went into shooting the product, which is definitely not the case in this episode. But if you were backed into a corner like that someday, why not consider trying Storyblocks' incredible library over 790,000 HD and 4K clips. In fact, you can find dozens of clips of people wearing headphones, doing all sorts of things that show off the product, people exercising with the headphones, listening to music in bed with the headphones, or on the couch playing air guitar with the headphones. Literally everything you need to show off the versatility of your product. And sure, you might have to cut away really quickly before anyone notices that those aren't actually the headphones that you shot, but the point is, Storyblocks has an entire library of clips that doesn't limit the amount of times you can download them. That's right, unlimited downloads starting at $17 a month. It's basically a must have out there. So get started by going over to storyblocks.com slash indie mogul and learn more about their wonderful stock footage library. And now back to the episode. So already this is an acceptable shot for me. Yeah. I would run this easily all day long, but there's a few things we can do to kind of make it pop and make it a little bit different. I like to use haze a lot. We just need a puff of smoke in the background and that's going to be picked up by our backlight and just give us some visual interest in the background. You have to say the name of the fucker, the Mr. Skelly Skellyton. So I got the Mr. Skelly Skullerton <laughs> at Party City. It was $79.99 and Fog Juice is like 10 bucks, I think for a sure. gallon. 
Okay, so this yeah. is a really good issue to run into. What's the problem? Um, so we have our smoke, but it's not really present in the scene, right? It's just kind of muddy in the background. So I think we need to add one more light into this setup. And that's just going to be an effect light to give us a backlight on that smoke. So the closer it is to being directly behind the product and down the barrel of the lens, the more you will see it. Let me know if that's flaring in the camera. Yeah, that's flaring. Are we seeing it? Yeah, we're seeing it. There you go, that's good. And then if we can get the house lights back off, here comes the haze. Now, you can see the difference. Oh, uh, night and day. You have to be delicate with the haze, right? Because it could also wash your image out. Um, you usually, generally want the haze to be behind your product, mm -hmm. so you still have the sharpness and the contrast. Uh, too much haze will lower the contrast. And in films, that's cool, that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. It looks soft, it looks more filmic, it looks great. But with products, you generally want it to be like tack sharp, and you want it to be clean. And then yeah, we could throw the red in. I think that looks great. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, so let's yeah, see if we good. put the red on the backlight. And that's a cool thing, right? You can, you're not stuck to anything here. Yeah. Experiment, turn off some lights, turn on other lights. See what looks nice. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. that's cool, I dig it. Different options. And then, like I said, if you move, just by moving a couple lights, you can get a different look. A little more frontal now, if you want to bring it up and give it more of a, a commercial. Commercial look. Or, you can go a little more back. A little more back. If you want to go a little moodier. To give it a little moodier. Oh, that looks great, dude. That looks great as it is. So, for the most part, I think a lot of people think that all product shots need to be really bright and happy. Yeah, I mean, what do you say to that? Normally, big productions, it's a safe move, right? You, you light it bright, high key lighting, it's gonna show the product as it is. But I feel like, especially in the indie world, that you can break the rules a little bit, right? So, here we have an extremely contrasty look. Um, and it also goes into the brand, right? If the brand's edgy and the brand is for younger people, you kind of go with that flow and you kind of just do research. So you can do different things. It just has to make a little bit of sense. If this is an edgier headphone company, they're like, you know, all about like rock music and that kind of stuff. Why not go ahead and do this? As long as you can go and get moments where you can see the logo clearly. And like I said before, make sure you have a normal light on the product so that you're not misleading people into the color of it. A lot of companies want their products just to look safe. They don't want it to look so intense and, and gritty. But personally... I like it gritty. I like it gritty too. This, for me, of all of them, possibly even that, looks amazing, looks so cool. I always like to have multiple looks. So I'll probably go around and turn off and leave one light on, let it roll for five seconds, turn that off, turn another light on, let it roll, right? Because that gives you so many options in post. Now you can do something where the product spins and a light turns on, turns off, turns on, turns off, overhead turns on, turns off, right? So there's a lot of effects that you can actually build in if you're thinking about the edit in production. Okay, so after we've got our wide, what kind of shots are we punching in for after this? So now I wanna punch in for close-ups. We're gonna make sure that it's 50% different than our uh, original shot. That way it doesn't look like a jump cut, it looks more intentional. And then we're also going to add a little bit of movement with the close-up. While being on the tripod, we can still add that movement without bringing in a slider or anything, just by following details around as they move with the Lazy Susan. Finding details like the logo or the stitching or the, the hinges, reflection. The reflection. Hinges, anything that kind of screams the features of the product. Sun Boys, headphones for the modern era. Done. Ooh! And cut. Cut! There we go. <laughs> Now this product shot that we did is headphones, obviously, but we could swap this with all kinds of other stuff. Anything you want. I think any product would work in this scenario. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw in some products real quick, just to show that it all looks fine. Alrighty, so I think we got it. Uh, real quick, Justin, for people that are approaching this for the first time, what are the big takeaways they got in there? So this is a classic look that's really easy to do. You don't have to have a location, you don't have to have a studio. It's a black wall with a black table and you can get this shot. But also, you know, just experiment. Remember, try turning lights on and off and just, you're not stuck to one thing, so. Right on, yeah. sounds good. So for people that want to find you, Justin, as well too, where can they find you? Yeah, so on Instagram, at JustinJonesDP, and the studio that we're at today is my new studio. It's beam.la. Again, thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Start upgrading your videos with high quality stock footage by going over to storyblocks.com slash indie mogul. And of course, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. We'll try to get down there and answer those as well. But indie mogul, I'm Ted. And of course, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Indie mogul.
when you start getting into bigger commercials and stuff like that, you'll have somebody yeah. from the company there with you, yeah. helping you stay on brand. Um, also, so casually standing behind your shoulder. All day making long. Making sure yeah. that you're doing the right thing. and Basically uh, making all the decisions for you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. 